Okay, so I'm doing problems uh, three and six here. So we have that number three, you want to draw the graph of y equals two minus the absolute value of x minus five. And then for number six, it says draw the graph of y equals the absolute value of x minus seven. So uh, to make the graph for number three, there's, a there's three things that we have to talk about is the transformation or the translation for your graph. Um, and you just gotta know the basic shape. So what is the basic shape for the absolute value function? Shape. That's right. The basic shape is gonna be a V shape, okay? In this problem, there's gonna be three translation rules here. We have the positive two, we have the negative. So I'm putting these in quotes. And we have the negative five. So the positive two and the negative five gives us our shifting rules. With the, the positive two being outside of the absolute value here, we are going to go two units to the right. Uh, sorry, two units up. The minus five, which was attached to the X and it's inside of the absolute value, means that you have to go five units to the right. To some degree, yeah. And the negative, which is in between the two and the absolute value, that just tells us that we reflect the uh, graph over the x-axis. So when you reflect over the x-axis, your graph will now look like an upside-down V. So using these three transformation rules, I can make my graph for number three. Here's the y-axis being drawn, followed by the x-axis. Let's extend it a little bit more. Um, we went, let's say, from the origin, I went two units up, so one, two. I had to go five units to the right. One, two, three, four, five. I have my vertex point, which is five comma two, and then I just draw the V that goes upside down. And there you go, that will be the graph for number three. Okay, for number six, it's a little bit easier. There's only one transformation rule. Um, that is the minus seven, right? So what does the minus seven indicate? Are we going to go seven units to the left, to the right, up, or down? Yep. Because the minus seven is attached to the x, which is inside of the square root function, we go seven units to the right. Now, do anybody know what's the basic shape for um, y equals the absolute value of x? Anybody know what that basic shape look like? Yeah, it sort of looks like a curved arrow, sort of like half of a parabola. I call it the fishing rod. I say that, okay, this is your, this is you, that, that point. It's like you're throwing the fishing rod or you're extending it, but it never comes back down, right? So that's basically what the basic shape of the square root of x looks like. So when you make your graph, here's your y-axis, here's your x-axis. I go seven units to the right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I plot that point, that's my anchor point, seven comma zero. And then I draw that curve, All right? So there you go. That will be y equals the absolute value of x. No, y equals the square root of that, the square root of uh, x minus seven. And that's how you do your transformations.